Well, it's time now for a deeper dive into all things business in the state with our insiders panel. This week, uh, very happy to be joined by Hathaway Strategies President Ann Hathaway. Also, Winston Tarot Group pr uh, Principal Robin Winston and Trendy Minds Chairman and CEO Trevor Yeager. And welcome one and all to the insiders uh, you, this week. Thank Great you. to have you all in studio uh, for a change. Um, uh, big news late in the week uh, from Columbus. Uh, Cummins announcing a leadership change that I think surprised a lot of people. I know it kind of took me by surprise. Tom Leinberger stepping down uh, as CEO. Jennifer Rumsey will be taking over. She was announced as president and COO, I guess less than two years ago, but a transition uh, that will take place uh, shortly, August 1. Uh, and your take. Oh, exciting. A female CEO, <laughs> yep. Hoosier born, Hoosier educated. Um, I think it's a great move for Cummins and for Indiana. Yep. Yeah, I think Jen has a great track record at, at Cummins. I mean, she's she's well, well qualified for this position and it is wonderful to see a female CEO, especially in a male dominant industry and just CEOs in general. Very, Yeah, very much male dominated yes. industry. You bring up a good point. Uh, Purdue grad, grew up in Columbus yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and it, it, neat to see an Indiana marquee company with obviously a plan, a succession plan, and, and, and having it play out. And an Indiana company with an Indiana CEO. Right. Yeah. I mean, right. so this is somebody that's going to know how to get to downtown Indianapolis yeah. without a GPS. <laughs> that's going to be beneficial to us in the future, too. Yep. A uh, lot of news uh, with development going on around the state. Uh, we had Mayor Chris Jensen from Noblesville on the show earlier uh, at the top, of the, uh, the top of the show. A billion dollars in private capital investment in a little over two years in Noblesville. So, you know, Fishers and Carmel and Westfield get a lot of attention. Don't sleep on Noblesville. I mean, they are doing, there's a lot, a lot going on there. Well, there is, and they have the land to continue their development. Yeah. Also, Riverview Hospital is fantastic for them being right there. Come through town, you have to detour because there's downtown development. The mayor is doing it in a reasonable, practical way. And is that, and he brought that up in the interview, that the challenge is he wants to grow and continue to grow, but it also needs to be in the right way because to keep Noblesville's uh, vibe, if you will. Absolutely, the culture, yeah. the, the tone of Noblesville, he's very respectful of that, but wants to continue to add population and for to see the city grow. Yeah, I think you're seeing that around uh, Indiana and as well as around the country too, that you're gonna have that other populations that are changing because of influx of people and opportunities. It's a nice shift of what's going on. So I think if they keep their eye on that, but still open to all the opportunities. It's really going to help uh, the city of Noblesville. And you talk about growth. He said that the population now, I think, is 70,000, which is the 10th largest city in the mm -hmm. state. He thinks it can easily double. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And they have the room to do it. Yeah, they have the room to do it. Uh, let's go to Northwest Indiana. Uh, Robin Pete Visklosky, longtime congressman who has done uh, so many things for that region on a number of uh, levels, among them the South Shore uh, extension, the expansion, uh, cutting down the commute time to downtown Chicago. That is now becoming reality after many years. We talked to him this week, and he talked. Now he's at the airport, right, uh, doing some things there. He thinks that the uh, uh, South Shore activity is just the tip of the iceberg for what can happen in Northwest Indiana. They're going to build stations in Munster, they're going to build things in Dyer, they're going to be opening up a way to get to Chicago faster. The airport has stabilized itself, they moved the railway that was there was an impediment. They're now talking about marketing and putting more signs on the interstate to highlight yeah. the airport. He truly is a public servant, you know, served in Congress since 84, coming back to his hometown to give back as, as the chair of the airport Do board. you think it'll happen, what they're talking about? It sounds, I mean, all the pieces seem to be in place, but we've heard this before in Northwest Indiana. You know, and you, there's a gateway to Chicago. You've got this big economy up there, but it just hasn't happened yet. There seems to be momentum and enthusiasm that this is the time that it's going to happen. It will, and it will happen at the airport because Midway is landlocked. It can't do anything. O'Hara is swamped. So this is a perfect place for corporate jets to come in. The Boeing CEO used to fly out of there. Michael Jordan used to fly out of there. The president used to fly out of there. So, I mean, it's getting itself on the map in great way. And if we look at how airlines is, is changing, the private air is up 30%, where an industry mm -hmm. used to grow 4 to 5%. They're looking for other easier airports to get in and out of, too. There's right. a lot of people up in that region that, you know, if they start looking for quick trips they need to get to, whether it's for business or even for pleasure, yeah. uh, I think that it could really have some wins there. Well, and let's not forget, there's land around that airport that's available for development mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So there are new opportunities there. I think the thing I would point out, Gary, is that there's a relationship between a Republican governor, a former Democrat congressman, um, mm -hmm. and there's real opportunity to do this um, without the partisan in input and, and make change. That's, you know, and that's a great point because listening to Pete Visklosky in the interview we had, 
uh, in the Inside Edge this week, he talked about that, talked about the governor, and you know, it was, it's nice for a change <laughs> to hear you know people from mm -hmm. differing parties kind of get along and talk, talk along and have a vision and have a vision, mm -hmm. yeah, shared vision. Uh, let's go to Northeast Indiana now, now. The regional partnership there out with a strategy for the 11 county area. Uh, there's so much going on so in that part of the state. Fort Wayne, I think there's as much going on downtown and around Fort Wayne as anywhere in the state. And what has impressed me is the fact that there's a plan up there mm -hmm. to get people there, mm -hmm. to get talent there, to attract it and, and keep mm -hmm. it. Those 11 counties are just booming. And to mm -hmm. the point we made with regard to the other side of the state, there's a plan, there's a vision. And uh, uh, thinking about the future, thinking mm -hmm. about where people live and what they're, how they work, what they do. Mm -hmm. um, real opportunity. Yeah, and they need to do that. Uh, every other state is, is vying mm -hmm. for people to move there. I mean, and, and with the pandemic, we're now seeing that people can work from anywhere. Mm -hmm. So now we're not just landlocked into one area saying you have to be here for your job. You can go anywhere. So yeah. you need to have more amenities. That area, I'm, I'm from just north of there in Michigan. Um, so I, I yeah. traveled in there know, quite yeah. a bit growing up yeah. and just through life. And there's a lot of natural resources. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of great lakes. There's, there's things that are close. I think there's a lot to offer um, from, from those, uh, those counties. You look at the thing that's going on with the electric works downtown, yeah. mm -hmm. and remember with streets like Harrison and the streets downtown where they mm -hmm. built out around the baseball stadium, mm -hmm. built housing, people are like, why are they doing that? Now you see that was a precursor to where we're more moving in Fort Wayne. Once again, bipartisan. Tom Henry is the mayor of, of, mm -hmm. of Fort Wayne, working with people all around him that are clearly not of the same party, but for a better purpose. Yep, uh, only have about 30 seconds. And what was your take on Lloyd Winicky, mayor of uh, uh, Evansville, three terms, not going to run for a fourth. I think it caught a lot of us off guard. Uh, yeah. He's been a great mayor and done so much for Evansville, so it's going to be interesting to see how that political landscape develops. All right, we'll be following that story and a lot more. Anne Hathaway, Trevor Yeager, Robin Winston, thanks for a great Insiders panel. Thank you. And we'll be right back after this.